It's 1.30. I'd like to call the Monday, August 15, 2016 meeting of the Traffic and Transportation Commission to order. Roll call. Commissioner Clare. Here. Commissioner Littlefield. Here, sir. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Hale. Here, sir. Commissioner Schulein. Here. Commis uh, Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner George. Here. And Commissioner Yockel. Thank you. Can I have a motion concerning the minutes of the July 18th meeting, please? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve mm -hmm. from Commissioner Hale. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Schuline. Any discussions? Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes of July 18th, 2016 from Commissioner Hale. Seconded by Commissioner Schuline. Votes, please. Okay, item is approved. We go on to e elections of the vice chair. Uh, as you all know, our vice chair resigned and we have a new Ward 1 rep. Uh, can I have a motion concerning uh, Vice Chairman? I'd like a motion to nominate Commissioner Hale, please. Okay. Commissioner Hale, do you accept the nomination? I do. do. we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Schuline. So we have a motion from Commissioner Yonkel to, and a seconded by Commissioner Schuline that Commissioner Hale becomes the Vice Chair. Uh, any talk on it? Anybody else? Any other nominations? Okay. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, and congratulations. Uh, reports on license and traffic and record service. You got one? Good afternoon, commissioners. We'll go over July's report. On driver's permits, taxis had 29 new, 18 were new. Vehicle inspections, 33 passed. Had one investigation and one citation. Uh, limousines had one new, two new, two vehicle inspections that passed. Carriages had one new, one renewed. Pedicabs, one new, one renewed. And, sh and uh, pedicabs had one vehicle pass and shuttles, two new, and six inspections passed on them. Uh, got any questions about the report? All right, thank you very much. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I needed to address. Commissioner Hale, you, you had a question about OKC Green from uh, last, last, uh, I double checked on her. They're still current on her insurance at this time. I had to contact with their insurance company. Had they, had they lapsed at some point in time? Technical terms they did, but they paid up and they're still in good standing from what the insurance company told me. And they sent me the new uh, insurance certificate. Too. Okay. So I do have that. Good. Policy. That's great. On the certificate, uh, is the city now listed as a certificate holder? And I asked that due to the ongoing problem we had with them about their insurance. It'd be in the bottom I bottom left hand. But you look. At this. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Comments? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. We go on to item four, the uh, the uh, consent docket. It's got three items on it. Anybody here to speak against a consent item? Okay. Can I have a motion concerning the consent docket, please? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve the consent docket from Commissioner Hale. Do I have a second? Second. Commissioner Schuline, do we have any discussion on the consent docket? Okay, we have a motion to approve the consent docket, item four, subs A, B, and C from Commissioner Hale, second by Commissioner Schuline. Can I have votes, please? Okay, item is approved. Going now to item 5A, uh, Sunny Investments LLC to consider an application for a, sir, a, a sir, certificate of public convenience and necessity from Sunny Investments LLC, parent company of Airport Express Inc to operate 75 shuttle transportation vehicles in van service. Anybody here to speak on this item? Yes, sir. And make sure to fill one of these I out did. when you're done. Yes, okay. David Batson, uh, I'm with all three of the companies listed, Airport Express, Medride, and uh, Premium Car, and we're just putting everything into a parent company, Sunny Investments. That's the And if I could have your, your, your actual address to 4225 you. Southwest 44th Street, Oklahoma City. Okay. Now, would you say that again, please? I'm just putting everything into a holding company to the parent company of Sunny Investments, so all three companies will be into that 
Sunny Investments okay. form. That's all we're doing. It's just a paper formality. All right. Thank you. Staff input. Uh, you've got a completed application for you. We're recommending approval as presented. Okay. Can we have a motion for 5A? A motion to approve. We have a motion to approve item 5A from, uh, from Commissioner Clare. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Yonkel. Any discussions on 5A? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5A from uh, Commissioner Clare, seconded by Commissioner Yonkel. Votes, please. Okay, item is approved. Okay, we go on now to item 5B, Sunny Investments, LLC, to consider an application for a certificate of public convenience and necessity from Sunny Investments, LLC, parent company of MedRide, Inc., to operate 75 non-emergency medical transport vehicles and van service. Okay, we have staff input, please. Uh, we're recommending approval of the application as presented. Okay, do we have a motion for 5B? Motion to approve. Motion to approve from Commissioner Yonkel. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. Any discussions? For item 5B, we have a motion to approve from Commissioner Yonkel. Second by Commissioner Ye uh, Hale. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is approved. We go on to 5C, Sunny Investments, LLC, to consider an application for a certificate of public convenience and necessity from Sunny Investments, LLC, parent company of Premium Car, LLC, to operate 75 vehicles in limousine service. Can I have staff input, please? Uh, we're recommending approval of the application as presented. We have a motion concerning item 5C. Motion to approve. Motion to approve from Commissioner Yonkel. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, second from uh, Commissioner White. Do we have any discussions on 5C? Okay, motion to approve 5C from Commissioner Yonkel, seconded by Commissioner White. Votes, please. Okay, item is approved. Thank you, Thank for, you for your time. We go on now to item 5D, My Limo Date, LLC, to consider an application for a certificate of public convenience and necessity from My Limo Date, LLC, to operate 10 vehicles in limousine service. Anybody here to speak on this item? Okay, can we have staff input, please? Okay, we've got a completed application for you. This is for a new vehicle for hire company, so we're recommending approval of the uh, application as presented. Okay, thank you very much. Do you have a motion concerning item 5D? Move to approve. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Littlefield. Do we have a second? A second. A second from Commissioner White. Any discussion on 5D? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5D from Commissioner Littlefield, second by by Commissioner White. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is approved. We go to 5E, Jonathan Hustle, PE, President, Project Manager, Path Engineering, Design and Ur Urbanism, PLLC, to consider a request to, one, establish 60-degree angle parking within a proposed on-street setback parking area on the west side of Northwestern Avenue between Northwest 48th Street and Northwest 49th Street, and two, Establish a reserve parking space for the physically disabled on the west side of Northwestern Avenue from approximately 115 feet south to 145 feet south of the south curb line of Northwest 49th Street. Anybody here to speak on this item? Sir, if I can have your name, your address, and you have up to five minutes. Sure. David Box, 522 Colcord Drive, and I'm here on behalf of the app. Um, as a bit of introduction, I think it's important that the Commission understand where this project started, perhaps. Uh, this has been a long process through a zoning case in which one of the, the key elements to this was the parking, uh, not only in the back of the project but along Western Avenue. Uh, Commissioner Littlefield was uh, very helpful with his time and attention to the details for this project. Ultimately, the Planning Commission recommended approval and the City Council finally uh, did approve this project, again, in large part uh, because of what we were bringing in terms of the development, but also the parking. So if we focus on the parking element, if you look up and down Western Avenue, what you'll see is the parking we propose in this application matches to a T the parking that the city itself has installed. Uh, what that means is the Western Avenue landscape has been a success. One of the reasons that the city spent so much time, effort, and money in that is to spur private development but not only the development, but to spur private development with parking that facilitated pedestrian activity at the street level. So what we have now is an application that matches identical to what the city has done up and down Western. I understand at the last meeting there were some concerns about perhaps the ability to park an F-250. 
Uh, we did go do some independent studies, and one of our guys happens to own an F-250. So what he did was he pulled his truck into one of the city constructed spaces, and we have video, if you'd like to see it, of that truck backing out, uh, able to back out, not cross the center line, pull forward, and leave that space. So what we have done here is provide what the city has asked us to do. Uh, that is, match what they've done. Uh, we have met with staff, and we thank them for their opportunity. And I would like uh, Mr. Chai to confirm at this point staff is wholeheartedly in support of this and no longer has any concerns. Uh, staff's here to represent the item. Uh, to to discuss any questions that you may have, but we're here in a technical supporting role at the moment. Sure. And is staff supportive? Oh. It's the application. Well, the application presented is a duplication of some of the uh, parking that was installed further to the south on Western Avenue in the area between Northwest 41st Street and 45th Street. So the application that you're being presented with today is, like I said, a, a duplication of the parking that was done as part of a city-funded streetscape project. So with that, we believe we've addressed uh, any concerns with the, the functionality of, of this parking. Uh, we would ask for your approval, and we'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, make sure to fill out one of these green forms if you have that? Have you filled out one of these yet? I have n No, I have not. Could you please? Sure. All right, thanks. All right. Uh, anybody else to speak on uh, item 5E? Okay. Can we have staff input, please? Uh, you've got all the comments, staff comments before you. Uh, this item was continued from the July 16th meeting to address some of the items that the commission had expressed at that time. Um, at the end of this particular agenda item, the, the applicant had provided an updated letter where, uh, as Mr. Box alluded to, they had done some, they prepared some other exhibits and they, they appeared on like page 22, I believe there's a diagram that illustrates how, you know, a maneuvering yeah, maneuvering in and out of the spaces as designed. So action before you is at the discretion of the commission. Um, if, if approved, we'd just recommend approval, include um, the fact that the applicant provides sidewalks conforming to the public works current design standards and the parking spaces as constructed uh, and the sidewalks adjacent to them must either be built within public right of way or an easement. Okay, and can I Come back to that. Is, is, we agree with are you. Okay, with, with the two staff inputs. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Can I have a motion concerning item five e? Move to approve. We have a motion to approve with staff inputs. With staff input. Okay. We have a motion to approve item five e from Commissioner Littlefield with staff inputs. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, second from Commissioner White. Do we have any discussion on this item? Ma'am. I think I would just want to say this. When presented with something that seems to, based on any vehicle size, present an, a concern, I think it's our responsibility to evaluate it. Um, calling it a success or not, I, I'm, I don't want to call the previous parking a success or not. I do see there's precedent here. So that matters. We've, we've got a similar situation to some degree. Um, but I still think evaluating something when it appears that it's forcing uh, possibly any size vehicle into an oncoming lane, I think that merits scrutiny. I think that's part of our role. I see my role that way. So it's not any technical issue to try and delay progress on an important project, but I think it's just due diligence. So I appreciate the additional input and I, I I believe even in the past, I mean, we have fairly recently passed something like this. That's the precedent. So I, I just want to make sure it is part of our role, I see it, to scrutinize things when it looks like it could be problematic. I just feel like I need to say that. Okay, any other talk on 5E? Sir? Where, where the, the focus streetscape area on Western Avenue where this we're using the words exact same type of parking was installed by the city is there any history since that's been done of, of any accidents or problems uh, we've not as, as far as preparation for this case goes we did not pull any any updated collision information through that area so no way I don't have that available I mean if you'd like to have that at the next meeting we can bring that 
I can bring you a summary if you'd like to see it. Um, what's really important, I think, for all of us to understand is when you look at this section of Western Avenue between Northwest 50th and about Northwest 36th Street, what we, what we have there is a, a neighborhood business district is the term that I use and that a lot of, a lot of folks in the city use when we, when we look at this place. If anybody's ever been into VZDs long ago, they have pictures posted in there from that corridor from way back in, in the 30s. And it was almost like a downtown for Crown Heights neighborhood, Helm Farm neighborhood, all those other neighborhoods. That's where, that's where they traded. And what the city is, is trying to accomplish with these, these cells around Oklahoma City, particularly, I'm particularly interested in the ones in Ward 2, it, it's an attempt to bring back that neighborhood business district, calm the traffic, encourage walking, encourage biking. It's, it, it's, it's already in place in the focused area. When you look at, you know, expanding a little bit out north and south, I see no problem in encouraging that same kind of design between 50th and 36th particularly. This isn't the kind of thing I think that's going to be attempted on Northwest Highway or North May Avenue or someplace like that. It's a, those areas are where we want to focus on moving traffic. These particular areas are where we're trying to restrict and consolidate, make things narrower to encourage less people to drive there and more people to walk there and to calm traffic. Now, I'm very much in favor of approving this. Okay, any other talk on item 5E? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5E from Commissioner Littlefield, seconded by Commissioner White, with the motion included in the two staff inputs. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is approved. We go on now to item 5F, B.J. Hawkins, P.E., PTOE, Traffic Engineering Consultant, to consider requests for the installation of a traffic signal on South Council Road at its intersection with a private street, Southwest 2nd Terrace, located approximately 460 feet south of the West Reno Avenue. Staff. Okay, the uh, applicant contacted us and they'd requested that this item be deferred to the September meeting. Okay. Can I have a motion concerning item 5F? Mr. Chair, I move that it be deferred until September. We have a motion from Commissioner Shuline to defer item 5F till September. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, for item 5F to defer to September meeting from Commissioner Shuline, seconded by Commissioner Hale. Can I have your votes? Okay. Item is deferred. We go item to 5G. Peter Schaefer, Kaiser uh, Grateful Bean Company, uh, Bean Cafe, uh, to consider requests to establish two hour limited time parking on the south side of Northwest 10th Street from approximately 80 feet west to 180 feet west of the west curb line of North Walker Avenue. Anybody here to speak on this item? Okay, can we have staff input please? All right, you've got the comments before you. Um, these are existing angle parking spaces. Uh, there are a few that are on the south side of um, 10th Street to the west of the Walker Avenue roundabout. These are the spaces that you're considering today are the, those that are just immediately on the north side of what is currently the Kaiser's Grateful Bean Cafe. Uh, what staff is noting on this is that uh, we have, there is no objection to having this uh, particular time-limited parking restriction placed on them. These spaces will, however, be converted to a pair of parallel parking spaces when the downtown, when the MAPS 3 streetcar is constructed. So uh, they will, this will allow for those spaces to be, to have a time limited control, but the duration, how long those spaces are going to be in existence yet will be dictated by when rail construction starts. So we'd recommend approval as submitted. Okay, do we have a motion concerning item 5G? Mr. Chair, I move the application be approved. Uh, motion to approve item 5G from Commissioner Schuhlein. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. Any discussion on item 5G? Okay. Motion to approve item 5G from Commissioner Schuhlein. Seconded by Commissioner Hale. Votes, please. Okay. Item is approved. Okay. 5H, Jonathan Hustle, PE, President, Project Manager, Path Engineering, the Design and Urbanism, PLLC. 
To consider request to one, establish 60 degree angle parking within the proposed on street setback parking area on the east side of North Hudson Avenue from Northwest 9th Street to approximately 160 feet north of the, of the existing north curb line of Northwest 9th Street. Two, establish a reserve parking space for the physically disabled on the east side of North Hudson Avenue from approximately 30 feet north to 47 feet north of the existing north curb line of Northwest 9th Street. And three, establish 60 degree angle parking within a proposed on street setback parking area on the north side of Northwest 9th Street from North Hudson Avenue to approximately 110 feet east of the existing east curb line of North Hudson Avenue. Anybody here to speak on this item? Sir, if I can have your name, your address, and you have up to five minutes. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Jonathan Heisel, uh, 215 South Walker Avenue. Thankful to uh, be able to speak to you all today. This is a, a great project, and we've been working with staff for several months on this project to get it tweaked just right. I did receive um, an email from, from Eric regarding uh, bullet point three of the staff comments. He says he was able to visit with Stuart this morning. Um, we should be... Uh, the, over, the, uh, the buffer space was overlooked. This is a similar, this is exactly the same dimensions as the 60 degree angle parking on item E. Um, and the ADT is about 4,600 rather than the 12,000. So this is a very similar mixed use project in Midtown. Um, and that uh, with the same dimensions as what we've, what we've got. I've also got the, that video if you would like to see that showing actually an F-250 parked between two F-150s, which is even more difficult and how that, that movement works, if you would like to see that. But uh, anticipate no issues, and I uh, would be willing to answer any questions you may have on this. All right, thank you very much. Staff input. OK, you've got our review comments before you. This is a similar application as far as uh, being 60 degree angle parking as to the one that you'd considered earlier on Western Avenue. Um, there is one difference is that in that um, this Hudson Avenue and Northwest 9th Street in this area are going to be are currently in the planning phases for a city streetscape project. So under the uh, summary of staff recommendations as I appear on page six, uh, where we discussed the uh, additional three feet of buffer space behind the end of the parking spaces, it could be that this, this additional maneuvering room could be incorporated into the design of the city streetscape project to, you know, as opposed to making it incumbent as part of this particular site development. So it would be our recommendation that um, Sidewalks in accordance with the city's requirements, uh, parking spaces being with either located entirely within public rights of way or easements, and then the additional three feet of spuff, uh, buffer space be incorporated into the city's streetscape project, and that would be our recommendation. So action on this item will be at the discretion of the commission. So are you okay with those three, recommend, three recommendations? That's not what, okay, yep. That's not what I understood from Eric's um, email on Monday, actually. He said, I was able to visit with Stuart this morning and all should be good to go on Monday. He overlooked the buffer space on the drawings as you and I discussed, which is shown on the lane width instead of as a designated area. On Western Avenue, the buffer space is three and a half called specifically out in the drawing, which is why, I missed, why it was missed. I would encourage you to still attend the TTC meeting on Monday in case there are any questions. I'm, I'm too open. I'm trying to open my calendar to, to attend if necessary. Sorry for the confusion. So that's not what I understood. Uh, we, we did it exactly as the 60 degree angled spacing. I've been working with CEC on the streetscape project and there's still 15 feet of southbound lane if, um, for any streetscape project that, that needs to be incurred. What would happen is, is if, if we want to push the slide it over, that's fine, but, but we're right now at the right of way line and, and any encroachments onto the, onto the project would, would be detrimental. Right, and the way this is written up, this doesn't, this does not require any design changes on the private development side. Okay. It would be, it would be making accommodation within the limits of the, of the streetscape portion of the project. It would all be within right away. It does not physically move or make any alterations to the design as it's presented today. Okay. If anything, it may move a curb line even further out, but those would be design details that would, that would be done by okay. a CEC as part of their project. Okay, I understand. I just wanted to make sure we're not pushing the curb line. You're correct, yeah. Parking. Thank you. Okay, so you're okay with the three recommendations? Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Uh, do we have a, a uh, motion concerning item 5H? Mr. Chairman, I move the application be approved with the staff recommendations. 
Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5H from Commissioner Schuline. Do we have a second? I second. Okay, second from Commissioner Clare. Do you have any discussions on item 5H? Ma'am? So with the suggested adjustments, does this mirror the item that we just had? Or does this allow for more room for a larger vehicle so it's not going into the opposite lane of traffic when it backs up? The way the current, I'm sorry, the way the current motion stands is what you're looking at doing is, is, is um, this particular design is different from the one on Western Avenue in as much as the backside of these parking spaces goes up to the current edge of the roadway. The city's, the city's streetscape project that goes on Hudson and on Northwest 9th Street can make a further curb adjustment to provide that extra maneuvering space. And so to that's make what you'd this be more at. palatable. Yes. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Any other discussion on item 5H? Okay. We have a motion to approve item 5H from Commissioner Shuline with the three staff recommendations and seconded by Commissioner Clare. Can I have your votes, please? Okay. Item is approved. Okay. We go on now to 5I, Bill Carey, Jr., to consider a request for the addition of a stop control on North Dewey Avenue at Northwest 18th Street to establish all-way stop control. Have somebody here to speak on this item? Okay, well, let's see here. Are you the applicant, sir? Yes. Okay, yes. then we'll let you go first. Have you filled out one of these yet? No, I haven't. Okay, when you're done, just please fill this out. Can I have your name, your address, and you have up to five minutes? Okay. Yes. Good afternoon. My, my name is Bill Carey. I'm a lifelong resident of Oklahoma City, uh, lived in Heritage Hills, owned three properties in Mesta Park and Heritage Hills, spanning some 40 years. Um, my comments will be, will address all four of these items that are lined up for you, the four four-way stops. Um, the, um, I'm also a member of the board, board, Neighborhood Association Board of Heritage Hills, and as part of that, a chairman of the traffic committee of that. We've expanded that committee to include uh, both residents of Mesta Park and Heritage Hills East. You know, please indulge me for a little little bit of history here that's relevant to this topic. You know, back in, many of you may remember this, but uh, years ago in the early 80s, traffic control in those three neighborhoods, as is shown on the board, consisted of um, signal lights on all intersections of 23rd and 13th. Uh, one-way streets of Harvey, Hudson, Walker, and Dewey. Um, huge volumes of traffic moving through the neighborhoods uh, in the double digits in thousands of them. Um, at that time, the three neighborhoods formed a, formed a similar committee. We hired consultants. We developed a plan that changed the one-ways to two-way, installed semi-diverters along Broadway, closed Classen Drive at Classen, Close 17th at Western and widened 13th from Chartel to Classen. Took out signals on 23rd at Harvey, Hudson, and Dewey and put in 11 four way stop intersections. The, um, all of those being in the interior of the neighborhood. We had a tremendous impact on reducing the volume of traffic in the neighborhoods, driving through the neighborhoods, particularly. With the wonderful development of uh, redevelopment of downtown 23rd Broadway, and I mean that sincerely, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, we are seeing significant increases in the volumes of traffic on our residential streets. Uh, it is empirical and it's statistical. So, two or three years ago, we formed a similar committee to identify the problems and seek solutions. We started with traffic counts and a goal statement. The east west traffic counts are residential volumes, uh, mostly under 1,000. The north-south volumes remain very high and are, and are increasing. In 2012, the volume on Chartel was 3,325 cars a day. It's about that same thing today. Walker had 2,850 in 2012, has 3,170 in 2015, about 11% increase. Hudson's had an increase from 1,000 in 2012 to 1,700, a 70% increase. Harvey had 1,200, has 1,253 in 2015. 
Robinson is up from 1450 in 2012 to 2283 in uh, 2015, a 57% increase. In response to these perceived and actual volumes, the neighborhood committee, in the neighborhoods, the committee arrived at the following goal statement. To provide in the area bounded by 13th on the south, Western and Classen on the west, 23rd Street on the north, and Broadway on the east, as much encouragement as possible for drive through traffic to use those four arterials rather than travel through the neighborhood to achieve and maintain a residential volume of no more than 750 cars per day on each of the residential streets, neighborhood streets. <laughs> As a committee, we met regularly, built consensus, got advice from traffic engineering consultants, and finalized a plan. We then took the plan back to each neighborhood board and got overwhelming approval. It was circulated through each neighborhood via general meetings and our newsletters. The graphic of that plan is in your materials. If anybody needs a bigger one, I've got some. I have, <clears throat> it makes little sense to address the four intersections that are on the agenda today without looking at, at our complete plan. So I appreciate you doing that with me. You can see that the first strategy is to make four-way stop intersections at 19 locations in, in the neighborhood. The second strategy is to install a semi-diverter at 16th and Broadway, similar to the ones going on up north. The third strategy is to convert Robinson to two-way from 13th to 16th Street and 16th from Robinson to Broadway. Also to stripe Robinson, Robinson to one lane each direction from 13th to 23rd. The fourth strategy is to remove the signals at Harvey and Dewey on 13th Street. The fifth strategy is to change Western from 16th to 18th from one way to two-way. The sixth strategy is to reduce the speed limits on Chartel and Robinson to 25 miles an hour and increase it on Broadway to 35 miles an hour. Strategy number seven is to disallow the use of the cut through from westbound traffic on 13th to Chartel. The eighth strategy is to convert the yield signs at seven intersections to stop signs. We have worked closely with, with Wilson School on this proposal, which is on Walker between 21st and 22nd, they tell us that over 200 kids walk to school every day. Our plan calls for four-way stops at their four corners with LED lighting. They have submitted a separate request for that, plus one-way treatment on the 500 block of 22nd for drop-off and pickup periods. Over a year ago, we had meetings to discuss this plan with Mr. Chai and Public Works Director Eric Winger. Mr. Winger told us that the city wanted to get this done because the neighborhood brought it to them. Uh, but they asked to break it into two or three pieces. The request letter that you have received as a commission reflects that. At this time, we are only asking for the four-way stops, the speed limit changes, and the yield sign changes, along with Wilson's school's request. Next, we were asked to uh, have a traffic calming study done, and we did that uh, at a cost of about $10,000. Um, the, uh, we were then asked to circulate petitions to identify support for the changes. We have done that. We have over 600 signatures in favor of the overall plan. The four intersections that we are dealing with today on the agenda has support of 67 plus percent of the nearby residents. We have also turned in additional signatures to put 11 more intersections on, on a future agenda. And we should have enough for the remaining four intersections. That is of the total of 19 requiring four-way stops within a week. It's just a matter of catching people at home. Um, this is a project that enjoys wide support throughout the 1,100 properties in the neighborhood. Um, we would like you as the Traffic Commission and city staff 
to become active partners with us to lower the volumes of through traffic on our residential streets. You can do that by being familiar with the problem and strategies that we have come up with. We will continue to bring additional parts of the plan to you for approval. If there are better ways to solve certain things, uh, we're all ears. Um, I ask for your support of these four-way four four way stops on the agenda today as a down payment in going forward with this complete plan. Perhaps we could deal with the remaining four stops, four-way stops, the yield sign conversions, and the speed limit changes over the next two or three meetings, depending on getting it through staff requirements. I thank you for your attention and your consideration. Any questions? All right, thank you very much. Uh, anybody else wanted to speak? Ma'am? Okay. Uh, Ma'am, make sure to fill one of these out when you're done, please. Oh, you already got one? Okay. And uh, we have your name Jorgensen. and your address. And yeah, you Mara Jorgensen at 625 Northwest 18th Street within that block um, at 18th and Dewey. That's one of my boundaries. And I just want to say I heartily support these four intersections and hope to see the rest of the intersections, the yields and the stops, all four-way stops, as well as the reduced um, speed limits um, when I walk in the mornings when I walk down Robinson people are flying down that street and it's quite frightening even on the sidewalk it's quite frightening so just wanted to express my hearty support for all of these thanks all right, thank you anybody else wanted to speak on item 5i yes sir I could have your name your address you have up to five minutes to make sure to fill one you got one already okay thank you Yes, my name is Gary Jones. I live at 804 Northwest 17th Street, which is right in the mix of where at least one of these stop signs are. Um, I realize that the purpose of Mr. Carey's plan is to impede traffic, but that's exactly why I don't like the idea. Um, I like to be able to drive through my neighborhood. I'm a reasonable person. I think my neighbors are reasonable people. We can drive and obey the speed limits without throwing up additional obstacles. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to come here today with a bunch of facts and figures. Uh, Mr. Carey obviously had that. I don't have that today. Uh, one of the reasons that I don't have that is because of the notice, how that was done for the meeting here today. Um, if you look at the intersection at 15th and Chartel, the notice that was posted faces 15th Street, so that people who are driving on Chartel had no idea about the meeting today, unless you circle the block, come back around in the right direction so that you could see the notice. Um, I don't know why that was done in that manner, but um, I don't feel that people had the opportunity to get to know what this plan was about. Um, I think we have a beautiful neighborhood, people driving through it, I don't mind it. Um, I want people to see the neighborhood, see how things have changed downtown. Um, I'm not scared of letting people come through our neighborhoods, um, driving their car reasonably, reasonable rates of speed. Um, and so I would encourage you not to um, vote for this today. Thank you. All right, anybody else wanted to speak on item five? Yes, ma'am. Come on up. Ma'am, you have up to five minutes. I need your name, your address, and fill one of these out. Marva Ellard, 1521 North Chartel. Um, I've either lived on 18th Street or Chartel since 1981, and I understand Mr. Jones's point, but I can tell you that there is a speed problem on Chartel. I can sit on my porch and watch people drive from 13th Street to the lot to the sign at 16th Street as quickly as they can. And a lot of those people that are driving through are not driving through to admire the beauty of the neighborhood. They're driving through because they can save time and miss lights going down 13th and trying to get to class in and get on class. In. So um, the, a reduced speed and a stop sign there would make a great difference to those of us that live on that street and walk our dogs, walk our pets, try to enjoy the neighborhood and not have people flying through the neighborhood. So I wish you would give uh, the whole plan and especially these items today uh, your positive consideration. All right, thank you, ma'am. Anybody else want to speak on item 5I? 
Yes, ma'am. I need your name, your address. You have up to five minutes, and please fill out one of these forms when you're done. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Kay Floyd at 412 Northwest 21st Street. And I just wanted to let you all know I've lived in the neighborhood for 23 years. When I moved in, I was one of the younger people in the neighborhood, and that's, uh, that's changed. I've seen a lot of people that are older than me move out, and a lot of young couples move in. Consequently, I've seen an increase in the children we have in our neighborhood throughout the entire area, from 13th up to 23rd, from Chartel over to Robinson. Many, many more children in the last 23 years. It has become dangerous for those children to play out in their yards. If a ball rides out in the street and they're not paying attention and they run out to get it, the cars going by, even though it's a residential neighborhood, are going by far too quickly. They're, just, they're driving too fast. Um, I agree that a lot of the people that are driving through, you see a, a definite increase in the morning, during the morning commute, and you see a definite increase in the evening, with the evening commute. Those people are not neighbors, those people do not live in the area, they are using the area as their commute. So I would ask that you please agree to this uh, request that we have and the further requests that will be presented later and help us make our neighborhood safer for the children. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else wanting to speak on item 5I? Okay, can we have staff input, please? Okay, you've got our comments before you. Uh, at this, okay, 5I, just going backward, is a request for always stop control, basically at the intersection of Dewey and Northwest 18th Street. Uh, you can see that our traffic volumes, the total traffic entering the intersection is just over 1,300 vehicles per day. Uh, with respect to the city's uh, longstanding criteria when evaluating a residential intersection for the use of always stop control, we t our, the, the city's longstanding policy is for an intersection to have at least a minimum traffic entering vol volume of about 2,500 vehicles per day. Uh, we've done, we conducted speed studies in the area on, on Dewey. We uh, measured an 85th percentile speed of 29 miles per hour. Um, in this particular case, the intersection does not meet any of the city's or the manual and uniform traffic control devices minimum traffic threshold volumes for the, to justify the addition of stop control on Dewey to make this an always stop controlled intersection. So action on this particular item will be at the discretion of the commission. All right, thank you very much. Do you have a motion concerning item 5I? Mr. Chairman, I move the application be approved. And we have a motion from Commissioner Shuline to approve item 5I. We have a second. Second. We have a second from Commissioner Littlefield. Any discussion? Yeah. Question for the applicant. I don't see the petition in, in the packet. I just have a couple questions about the petition. Okay, uh, as far as the petitions go, or, uh, in this particular case, the, the best that we could do was uh, to indicate those, in, those um, residences that had signed the petition in favor of the application. All right. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Okay, anybody else? Ma'am, you got another thing? The 67 plus percent that you said were in favor of your applications. Was that households or was that, was that a household count or was that a population count? I don't remember what you said. That's a property count within the 300 feet of each of these four intersections. Sir? Yeah, I have a question for the applicant. First of all, I, I love your neighborhood. Um, I think you uh, have some great traffic calming um, items already in place with the, the decorative paving and the chokers. Um, was, were any similar elements uh, considered in, in, in your plan, uh, traffic circles or anything like that? Um, we have talked about such things and, and visited with the traffic calming subcommittee of this body and uh, basically we're told it would be really difficult to get that, that part of it done and was, was not in the, uh, the quiver for, of, of arrows that was available to us. So we pretty well stuck with, with the stop signing and the changing the one-way streets, and eliminating trying to eliminate the uh, some more of the traffic signals on on, on 13. And, and a, and a follow-up question. Um, I know part of the intent of this is to is kind of to limit cut through traffic because people are wanting to avoid 13th, Chartel, Broadway. Has there been been any discussions with staff about? possibly improvements on those streets that would reduce, that would improve those streets and reduce cut through traffic? 
Are we, are we looking at other ways, maybe external? Um, well, I think to uh, improve for, things? for an example, I think thinning out the, the signal lights on 13th Street would have that effect. That it would make 13th Street much more efficient going east and west. And it might even encourage people to come up to 13th and go over to Class and, and Broadway. Additionally, the uh, increasing the, the speed limit on Broadway might have that effect. Uh, other traffic calming items was Broad, uh, Robinson's a, a good example of introducing a traffic calming item. That is squeezing both lanes of traffic down to one to one on each in each direction, and taking that from. Um, 13th to 16th, back to two-way. People really race through there uh, once they hit 17. Yeah, well, uh, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in, in walkability and, and increasing safety. Just from personal experience, what I see in my neighborhood is putting up more stop signs. Uh, people tend to pay more or pay less attention to them the more you put up. Um, so I, that's why I was curious if there were other avenues we're used to a lot of stop signs. Our east-west traffic has one every block. The, the, our proposal overall is, is half that amount going north and south. Uh, two blocks, every two blocks going north and south. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. For the applicant, is, the, is your sole reason for the stop sign to slow down traffic? Pardon me? Is the sole reason for this it's to slow down traffic? The reason I ask that is because historically stop signs do not work. I'd, I'd say I'd say it's common. It's primarily to encourage the traffic to go around the neighborhood, to use the arterials, and uh, you know if it, if it's a car parked on Hudson, and that helps uh, encourage people to go around, then we're all in favor of. It. Uh, but that I would say that was is the number one consideration that that we want to. The whole system, the whole program, all the elements is, in, is geared toward encouraging people to go around the neighborhood, not just the stop signs. Okay. Okay, any other discussion on item 5i? Sir? I lived in this neighborhood many, many, many years ago. <laughs> I'm not going to admit how long ago. And I lived on 21st Street, and I recall at the time it was like the, the very beginning of a very comprehensive traffic calming program in Heritage Hills that was brought about by the folks that live there. And I, I suspect that these applications are an, ex, an extension of completing what was started long ago. And what, what I see um, in this aerial are an awful lot of stop signs. And what I think that the effort there may be is to get consistency at these intersections. So I'd, I would like to see that move forward in that way. Um, I think the other comment that I want to make is whenever there is, is a, an organized neighborhood association that has reasonable goals that show up with the presence that these folks have today, I will always defer to a neighborhood association's decision for what they think is best for them. All right, any other talk on item 5i? Yes, sir. One last thing. The traffic has, has increased, what, 70% over the last few years in your neighborhood? Is that, did I understand that correct? It seems to vary on those streets, the highest being 70%, the lowest okay. being. Has there been any? research done on the impact that will have to the streets that will pick up that increase in traffic? Uh, at the staff level, we haven't done any, no. Okay. I mean, if we're going to divert, I mean, make the neighborhood uh, to where everyone's trying to avoid it, then it's going to impact everything around the uh, street around your neighborhood. And I was just curious if anything had been done, because it will pick up additional traffic. Yes, sir. Excuse me. I'd, I'd like to ask you, do you have any uh, numbers of the enforcement of the uh, stop signs you have now? Any citations been issued? Is everybody stopping? Is anybody running by them? Anybody's going slow? Uh, I have one at my corner, 16th and Hudson. And I mow my own grass. So I get a real good uh, analysis of that. 
on Thursday evenings at 5 o'clock. And the vast majority of them do stop. Now, sometimes you'll see somebody just blowing right through it. Uh, but I bet that's the case in every stop sign in town. Um, but yes, it's, it, I think the vast majority do stop. Well, and one other comment, I'm sure a lot of the neighborhoods would like to, in the Oklahoma City area, would like to see a traffic study like this, a traffic calming study to see. Unfortunately, like now, like the Commissioner Littlefield says, we, we're working on a traffic calming program to, to assist neighborhoods. We're not there. Right now, about the only, comment, only item they have is for a is stop sign or speed limit sign. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. There's other things that can be considered, but it, it needs to be more in the planning development stage than after the neighborhoods have already built up and then trying to figure out what to do. But mm -hmm. I, I, I know quite a bit about speed and stop signs, and I know that uh, you're not going to get your people to slow down. Now, as far as diverting traffic to an arterial, like that idea, as long as we don't keep making our arterials parking lots, because that's the other factor you'll have there. So eventually, people are there's going to be more and more congestion somewhere, and I don't know that. And obviously, you're not interested in user cost uh, because stop signs cost users over time. If you take all the stop signs in the United States, calculate the fuel consumption and the time delay. That gets to be a very big number. Mm -hmm. But in a little small neighborhood, people concerned about their children and people zipping by, and then uh, we'll go with the stop sign or something. There's not very many speed humps or speed bumps in these neighborhoods yet. Some of the little widening out chicanes and things like that. But until we get a comprehensive traffic calming plan that's implemented at the planning stage when these developments are being made, that's, that's when you can really affect how things are. So. I agree with you, and, and um, but to address your question about the streets, the arterials, you know, Broadway, I would think, has a large capacity. It looks like it has a large capacity at rush hour. 13th Street is a four-lane street all the way from, well, from Classen all the way to through the medical center. Uh, Classen, most of that, we, we try to encourage 13th Street traffic to go, to move over to Classen. Classen can certainly handle it. Yeah. And of course, 23rd is being pressed, but we're not really concerned with that in, the, in this. In this. What part. about the neighborhoods around 23rd right now? It's 25 mile an hour on 23rd Street in places, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Same as the neighborhood. So. But if you talk to your parents at, at Wilson School, and the, the young, I've seen this for a long time. The young. Uh, and I, when we did this, the first plan, I was a young parent with four little kids running around. Uh, now I'm an old man watching the young, young families uh, buy into the neighborhood and do the same thing. And they've, they've got really legitimate concerns, and they voice them. Uh, it, Heritage Hills, Mester Park, and East, Heritage Hills East are it's a unique situation. I, I doubt that there's another one in, in Oklahoma City in that there's there's su su such a, you know, a thousand residences in a grid just north of downtown and now sitting between two highly commercial areas, yeah. which is great. The commercial areas are great. The turnaround's great. Uh, but the, uh, the volume of traffic, and I'd say more volume than speed, the volume of traffic is more the issue than, than the volume of speed. Yeah, because the stop signs, sadly to say, Studies have shown they're just going to speed between them. You may stop them or slow them down, but they're going to speed up. They're going to make up that time if they're wanting to get through your neighborhood. Somebody's going to make up that time. Well, then maybe it'll come to them. That <laughs> maybe we'll, go, we'll go Broadway this time. But that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just a known fact. But yes. unfortunately, yeah. there's not a whole lot of calming techniques. And, and, you know, and I understand your problem, but I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of neighborhoods got your same problem. Yes, sir. I, I agree with um, Commissioner Miller's uh, remarks about the effectiveness of stop signs. Uh, the Traffic Calming Committee has done a lot of research in looking at effective traffic calming measures. And we're very hopeful that we're going to have something available 
to neighborhoods sooner rather than later. There's still a lot of work to do. But one of the things that we did discover is that people generally at least slow down at stop signs. People don't always completely come to a stop, but they will slow down. We did discover that. And the other thing that we discovered is that tr effective traffic calming is more than one element. Just a stop sign isn't going to calm traffic. But what's unique about this neighborhood is it has on-street parking, it, it's got sidewalks, it's got tree-lined streets, and those are other elements that are effective in calming traffic. Adding these stop signs is adding another traffic calming element that could work very well with the elements that are already in place. That's my comment. All right. Any other talk on item 5i? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5i from, uh, from Commissioner Shuline, second by Commissioner Littlefield. Can I have your votes, please? One, one moment. Oh, wait, no. Leave them all back up there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's a split, which means it's not approved. Okay. Item 5I is not approved. We go on now to item 5J. Bill Carey, to uh, consider a request for an additional, for the addition of stop control on North Hudson Avenue at Northwest 14th Street to establish all way stop control. So, did you have anything more to say right now? Okay, can we have staff input, please? Okay, you've got our comments before you. Um, again, this is another in, uh, request to convert an intersection to always stop control. It, it does not currently meet any of the city's current long, long standing criteria for the use of considering always stop control at an intersection like this. So, action will be at the discretion of the commission. Thank you. Can I have a motion concerning item 5J? I move the application be approved. I move the application be approved. We have a motion to approve item 5J from Commissioner Schuline. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Yonkel. Any discussion? Any discussion on item 5J? Okay, we have a motion to. Oh, did you have I something? Say that, you know, <clears throat> our staff really does a good job at collecting data to support our, our, the current condition, to support our decision making on these uh, types of issues. But the tools don't allow us to be proactive. And in this case, we're trying to look ahead. We're trying to, I think that the applicant is trying to be forward thinking, recognize that the traffic counts that Bill gave, I think, were from 2012 to 2015. And if we took them today, they're going to be even higher. I mean, as, as 23rd and Midtown uh, continue to develop, uh, the traffic is only going to increase. I, I, I really think that their plan is, is looking at the right thing, is to trying to change driver behaviors, trying to encourage that people who do have to stop another time or even slow down. Maybe not stop. They'll go around the neighborhood, and that's that's really what the intent is. And I uh, compliment the passion, the tenacity of these neighborhoods. Uh, some of the same community leaders, you know, it was 30 years ago, last month, July 23rd of 1986, that the first plan came to this body, and a lot of the same community leaders are still here. I look and I see. I know. I'm sure Shannon was here, and Bill was here, and Martha. And ironically, Commissioner Hale's dad was chairing the commission meeting. Um, so it's not, the problems are not going to go away. I, I, I really uh, I, I want to appeal <laughs> and hope that maybe we will take a different perspective on this and try to look proactively rather than just as the condition is today. That's all I really have to say. Okay. okay, and just just for your information, the counts that are presented in all of these cases today, these are all counts which are probably no more than maybe a month and a half or so old. So they're all very current. All right, any other discussion on item 5J? Yes, sir. Yeah. I have to agree with Commissioner Shuline. I mean, Littlefield, excuse me. We, we've, I, 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 the resident's voice is, matters to me, and I know it does all of us. I know we have to look at the science as well and the conditions, but when you live it, you live it. And in the absence of any other tricks in the hat, this is what's available for them. And I want to select my words carefully because these things fire me up a little bit. There, there, the due diligence is, I find, more than adequate to communicate the conditions that you're trying to 
to communicate, which due diligence goes a long way with me as well. But, but you're representing in, in a very fair way what you feel like the residents are saying. So I'm, I'm kind of with you here. I'm, I'm pulling for this because it's the citizen's voice. Like it or not, that's a lot of stop signs. But if it's if it's if you got three tricks in the rabbit's hat, this is, and they're, they're, they need, if they need the help, they need the help. And so I just that's I'm just putting out my thoughts as I tend to do, and I I just I just feel like we until we get more tactics and strategic forethought on the front end. A historic neighborhood doesn't have the opportunity to have the front end planning commission right now. They're, this is what they have. So I just, that's just where I am on it. The, the citizen's voice matters. Not that there wasn't an expression of the citizen's voice in opposition to this. I, I, I hear that too. I think you just have to, the petition counts matter. And in light of that there's such an absence of other tactics, I feel like this, the citizen that lives here, the, their vote matters. Okay, any other talk on item 5J? Yes, sir. Well, I, I'd just like to mention also, though, it, you can set a precedence to where people are going to say, okay, we know what they did and we know what you gave them, so... Here we are, folks, and the cheapest thing you can put in. Some of the traffic calming is going to be a little more expensive than taking in a four-way stop sign, but it'll be a lot more effective. And if you if you set a precedence and call it that and, and why it came here, personally, I'd like to have seen the consultant that did this and hear them because really that's what they've came up with right now is mostly stop signs changing that that's what they've came up with when well, yeah that'll, that'll that'll get people out of your neighborhood if you can enforce it but I don't know how your whole neighborhood I mean yours in right in the immediate vicinity might but I know in my neighborhood I've seen some unwarranted stop signs go in and after a while the people don't like them because they're the, now they have to stop at them every time and they'll say why is that there who put that in there well, I imagine they went before the traffic commission and got that approved somehow. Well, I never see anybody. The fact is, most people just run it. There's never anybody here to catch them. So what is it good for? Well, our point exactly. Stop signs does not slow people down. It usually makes them mad and they speed up from one to the other. But the precedent that you set doing these things I'll guarantee you, if I was in another neighborhood, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, hey, I know what you did last time. Here I am, folks. Now, let's see you deny me. And these, and we, we're already throwing away the MUTCD. It's been around much longer than some of these neighborhoods. The manual on uniform traffic control devices, that's, what we're, that's our guide that we're supposed to go by, to be uniform in how we treat the motorist with traffic control devices. There's guidelines for four-way stops and yield signs and traffic signals and turn lanes and multi-lanes and everything that we should be listening to. And if there is a some other circumstance that might be considered, then yes, that's what this body's to do. But our foremost, I would think, would be to see if the guidelines are being, and that's what the city staff, they do a wonderful job presenting all the guidelines in the background, and they have to come in here and say, hey, doesn't meet the warrant, but here it is. I'll speak to that just a moment. Um, I understand that. This neighborhood was, was designed in, in the early 1900s, and due to the usage of the, the uh, one-way streets, uh, the grid puts put stop signs uh, on the east-west streets at every block. Um, that probably didn't meet the, the uh, criteria. The, uh, and in the calculation of that, due to the fact that those st stop signs have shrunk down the, the east-west traffic to 
minimal amounts, it makes that calculation pretty suspect, where you have to have the, the minor street 80% of the major street. Oh. The, but if you've got 3,500 cars on Walker uh, and you've got 700 cars on 18th going east and west, then there's, you know, you're, you're just not going to have that kind of valid uh, calculation. It's a function of the, of the numerator being so high. So it's, it's, well, it's anyway. okay. Speaking of the stop sign, you know where the yield sign was invented? Pardon me? The yield sign. People got tired of stopping. They said, we need something here to, to really do what we're doing here. We're not really stopping. We're just kind of floating through. Somebody come up with the yield sign. Yeah. Don't have to well, stop. Everybody messes with that has yield signs around. Yield, yield sign was invented <laughs> in Oklahoma. Yeah. Came from Oklahoma. Same as the parking meter. <laughs> All right, any other talk on item 5J? I have a question yes, uh, for Stuart regarding speed limits in residential neighborhoods. How are those, uh, you may have told us before, but how are those established? Well, typically in neighborhoods, by default, they're 25 miles an hour. There are certain, st there are certain areas that have built up around other streets. I mean, some of these other roadways, you know, like where we, where you see um, like Broadway and others that might be, bear like a 30 mile an hour limit, were probably posted like that probably years ago, long in advance of, of the, the existence of things like the Centennial Expressway and the Interstate Highway System. So there are a lot of streets that are in the downtown area that no longer function as they were originally laid out because there are other larger roads that have been built in following years that have kind of replaced them. But, you know, in, within the Heritage Hills area, outside of um, maybe Chartel and, uh, and one or two others, uh, everything is posted at 25. And that's pretty much the norm for every, every new subdivision that comes in. They're all pretty much 25 mile an hour roadways. Okay. Sir? There is, there are neighborhoods like these where they live there they're asking for something that they think can have an impact. A stop sign's not going to stop everybody by no means. But no stop sign, nothing, doesn't have any effect or impact whatsoever. So if it just slowed traffic down a little bit at these places and appeased these neighborhoods' concerns, it's something worth doing. I don't believe that approving stop signs in neighborhoods in any way, shape, or form set a precedent for other neighborhoods that come along requesting them. We look at these closely. We deny many. We approve many. But what's unique about this application is the strength in the unity of this neighborhood and the history that they have starting a traffic calming plan many, many, many years ago when these were the elements that could be in place. And unfortunately, today, for what's available to a neighborhood to try to calm traffic is a stop sign or a yield sign. There's, that's why we have this traffic calming subcommittee. We're trying to get other tools. This is what they feel that they could use now. And I see no effort in approve, or error in approving this and giving it a, a try. Okay, any other talk on item 5J? Yes, sir. There was a lady I believe was wanting to speak. Ma'am, did you? Does somebody come up and want to speak? Okay. Uh, let me have your name, your address. You have up to five minutes to make sure to fill one of these out, please. Okay. My name is Michelle Stapleton. I live at 1523 North Chartel. My house is right next to the History Center. Uh, I think there's a stop sign at 17th Street. You've got 30-something. If I try to pull out of my driveway, back out, and there is something going on at the History Center, which is quite often, and it's 30-something miles per hour, and I slowly back out, and they ram on the brakes, and then they do let me out. Then they ride me, ride my bumper all the way to 13th Street because they're pissed because they had to slow down. Those are the kind of things you need to know that are going on there. Because it's not just a neighborhood. It's a historical neighborhood. And people are coming in to see the historical, and they're going into these, com these museums and stuff, and they are blaring. <laughs> you, you're not seeing the full picture, sir. We need those stop signs. Last year, we had two or three wrecks right next to the Wilson playground. 
they flew right through the stop sign and landed in the parking lot of the Mesta where the Pizza 23 is. They're just using it for speed line. No, there's not one. But they ran into the, the fence, turned over, and landed into the parking lot. There's too much speed. There's too many blocks that they can go without stopping. All right, thank you very much. Okay, you know, sir, did you have some one, closing comments? One additional comments? point. Um, just brought to my attention. This is not entirely about cars. You know, this is it. We do have sidewalks. Our neighborhood association, back before the sidewalk program, invested in those sidewalks in a partnership with the homeowners. And uh, the city came along and put in the ramps. But it's amazing how much foot traffic we have in our neighborhood. Now, if, if a kid's going to Wilson School walking from, say, 18th Street to uh, and Hudson or Harvey, uh, He's got to walk up two or three blocks to get to a stop sign. Uh, you know, it, people are out strolling in the evenings. Uh, you know, if you, five o'clock in the afternoon or 5.30, you're, you're going to deal with high volumes of traffic getting across some of these streets. Uh, so it is not just about cars. OK. Any other comments on 5J? One more quick yes, comment. Sir. Since my, my colleague, Commissioner Miller, points out that the MUTC guidelines, I want to emphasize the word guidelines. They're guidelines. They're not, it's not the Constitution. I mean, they can be, they can, you know, and we, we approve exceptions to them at every meeting for parks, for schools, for lots of things. So let's not get too locked up in the MUTC guidelines. I, I certainly support them, and we do think they're, it's great data for us to use and refer to, but it's really not the law. It's a guideline. That's all I say. Thank you. Okay, any last comments on 5J? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5J from Commissioner Schulein, seconded by Commissioner Yonkel. Can I have your votes, please? Again, it's a tie, so it's a push. The item is not approved. We go on to item 5K, Bill Carey, to consider a request for the addition of stop control on North Hudson Avenue at Northwest 18th Street to establish all-way stop control. Is there any final comments? Staff input. Uh, you've got all our comments before you. Uh, like the previous cases, uh, this particular location doesn't have the traffic volumes to uh, meet either the city or the MUTCD guidelines with respect to considering the use of always stop control. So action will be at the discretion of the commission. Do we have a motion concerning item 5K? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5K from Commissioner Schulein. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Yonkel. Any discussion on 5K? Oh, yes, sir. Come on up, please. Can I have your name, your address? You have up to five minutes, and make sure to fill out one of these forms, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name's Sam Blackstock. I've lived at the corner of 18th and Hudson for the last 18 years, and so I, I do walk the talk that we're here. Bill Carey's done a great job going through the different steps to move this along. My thought press process has been more visual. And what I have seen in the last 17 years is that I did not want a stop sign in front of my house. I wanted those people to keep going as opposed to stopping and then lay on the gas because of the noise pollution. But over the last four or five years, I have seen more children walk through there and while I appreciate that you might say this is a speeding issue, it's really a safety issue. It's a safety issue for our children and for the families that live in Heritage Hills. I'm, there's a four block area between 16th and 20th that kind of goes down the hill. It's the last hill to finish the marathon. Well, coming in the other direction to the north, cars don't realize how fast they're going because they pick up speed going down the hill. And I'm at where that levels off. And so they're, they're, I don't think, intentionally speeding through the neighborhood. They lose track of that because of any posted signs, stop signs, or, uh, or my, uh, mile per hour signs. So what my point is, is that the term that came to mind to me is, you know, like a bat out of hell. And I could assure you that during the week, from eight, 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning till 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening, 
There are no bats in hell. They're flying down Hudson to avoid the congestion on the Broadway extension, and they take that street all the way to 50th Street, jump over and, ju and avoid the congestion there. They're not going down Broadway. It's highly uh, patrolled by the police with the 30-mile speed limit. That's why we're looking to increase that. That's little baby steps that we're getting to. Um, increase the speed limit and make the flow better around it. We love for people to come to Heritage Hills. We have the most active homeowners association and tour of our homes. People open up their private homes to, um, to the general public to come in and we encourage people to come into Heritage Hills but not people that are leaving a Thunder game. And I can tell you whether the Thunder won or lost by the time the traffic comes down that hill. And it's just, the first time I saw it, I thought, what is going on? There's a funeral procession, and it's one car after the other flying down that street. They won't yield to, you can't put a yield sign there, which I would be in favor of, but then you're yielding to a stop sign. So then there's confusion. There are people that come through our neighborhood and they stop at every corner when there's not a stop sign. And that just really irks you because here they are, they're not paying attention because they're taking in the beauty and they're stopping at every intersection whether there's a stop sign or not. And then there's people slamming on their brakes when someone is walking through there because by the time they left 16th Street, that person hadn't even had time to make it all the way through the intersection. So in the name of our children, and the residents and the people that want to live in a safe neighborhood, I would encourage you to, to look at this particular intersection. I support the entire process, but I'm kind of baffled that this first step that we can't move and we can't at least look at the safety. We're two blocks from the school and we see a lot of foot traffic with children walking uh, on their own to Classen and going through there and standing there in the morning waiting for the traffic to yield to them, which they don't. So I would encourage you to uh, approve that. Thank you. I had a question before you leave. The, I want to make sure I understand correctly. Did it, do you feel like that if the speed limit on Broadway was increased to 35, that it would take some of the congestion and speeding out of your neighborhood and onto Broadway? Well, clearly, the, uh, you can, the police patrol that, sea, that, that area and generally they already have someone. They're, they, they pull into the Byron's lot to write their ticket or um, up at 13th Street because people lose track of how fast they're going. So increasing the speed limit might encourage them because if you've got a $100 ticket going down Broadway, you're going to go down Hudson where there's no patrol. I'll tell you that I did get pulled over floating a stop sign over in Mester Park and the police officer told me, he said, this is what my boss calls easy money because it's a four-way stop and you just, you know, tapped your brakes and went on through it. Fortunately, he gave me a warning. I assured him that my interest was safety and I was not paying attention, but it really opened my eyes and the police do set in that neighborhood and they watch people floating through there. But they can catch a lot more people on Broadway than they can uh, in Heritage Hills. I'm on the street, Hudson, that the volume of traffic has increased 70%. So we are the thoroughfare that avoids the stop signs on some of the other streets. And it, it is amazing. I mean, I could bring you a video after a Thunder game and you would just, the, the secession of cars at seven, nine o'clock at night is amazing. And it's commuters going to the north Oklahoma City and to Edmond that are avoiding the congestion of getting out of downtown. Because they've told me. People that work, that live in Edmond said, oh, I found a way to get, avoid the Broadway extension back up. We just cut through Heritage Hills and then we go all the way to 50th Street when the congestion's over. Until that, inter in that interchange is done there, it's going to be a problem. It, that's going to free it up, just like it did by putting the Hefner Parkway in, how it relieved May Avenue. But in the meantime, we have to deal with this for another five years. Thank you. If I'm hearing you correctly, are you saying that you really need more monitoring on Hudson as opposed to Broadway and increasing the speed limit on Broadway? Because I have no problem supporting that. 
having more police patrolling in your neighborhood as opposed to Broadway? We pay the neighborhood associate, the, the members of the security, we pay for off-duty police officers to be in our neighborhood. They also patrol Mesta Park and East Heritage Hills for a lot less of a donation from those, those homeowners. And we have a very strong uh, group of people. And so there's, there are off-duty policemen that really look out for us. I'm just saying give us, you know, we're not going to get speed bumps. I would just, I'd prefer a speed hump rather than a stop sign because it would bring people down to that level. But we need a stop sign at 18th and Hudson because of the children and the foot traffic at that intersection. And I live at that corner, so I can tell you that, that I've seen it. I'm supportable. I support the entire plan, but I, uh, but I tell you that intersection is extremely dangerous. And I have seen people crossing over that thought the cross traffic would stop because it does at other places, but it's not consistent. Now we're going to have some consistency and, uh, in the neighborhood when this plan is fully implemented. Thank you. Okay. Ma'am? When's the right time to interject a process question, not related to this particular item, but what I see happening with these items? Is this okay? Any time. So the, the, we're on item three. The first two didn't have not passed, right? This is me just speaking my mind. To me, the process with the vote of four to four um, becoming a, a resorting to it not passing because we are missing a member feels a little wrong to me. Now, uh, the, the rules are the rules, and this is what we do. But if we had a nine-member body here today, would, would their result be different? Maybe would, maybe wouldn't. But at least it gives them a better shot. I'm, I, don't, I, just, I feel like the tie is not going to the runner here. And I'm, I, I don't want to cross a line and pull for something that maybe on a nine, maybe a nine member body wouldn't pass. But I feel like defaulting to failure because we have a missing member feels wrong to me. I don't know if there's any way around that. Maybe they want to pull back their, their items and move them to another month and hope we have everybody here. But failure out of default doesn't feel right. And I'm not sure if this is appropriate to say or not. I really don't care. But that doesn't feel right to me. If it were my neighborhood, because I have been in front of this body as a citizen, that's how I wound up here, in fact, you got to pull for what you want. And the process failing you doesn't feel so good on their behalf. Now, maybe Commissioner George would vote in opposition. So be it. But a tie should not result in failure from a process perspective from me. These are the rules been a lot here a lot longer than me. So I don't know I don't know what Well it's just a normal counselor. rule. It's a normal rules of order. I understand Robert's normal rules. rules of order, but sometimes they don't make sense. Yes. <laughs> but you know, and we could go all the way down to just just five here and, and still vote in process through as long as we got a got an actual quorum. I, I it just doesn't it doesn't it doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit well with me. So I don't know I, I don't know. I just I feel like well, a tie should not result in failure because we are missing a member. Doesn't feel good. Got it. Ma'am. So may I ask if I'm hearing you correctly, are you asking what the procedures or possibilities for the applicant are or you know what, I guess I, if I, I don't know what I'm asking. Okay. Do you I just reason? tend to say what's on my mind, and this is on my mind right now. So I, I guess I need to defer to the applicant to question the process, but maybe the process is fine for them. Hold on one second. Okay, uh, just, just to be clear, to move an item forward as approved, you have to have a, a, 
a majority of the of the commissioners that are actual present. So I that's understand. just a way to move it forward as a positive. Now I think the a council is going to just re remind the applicant and everybody here of what the process is past today. So ma'am, if you could just go mm -hmm. ahead and just real no quick problem. bring us up on that. Just one second. Uh, so as the commissioner was just mentioning, there is a process if you were to ask for a deferral or to um, ask for their item to be stricken as well. Um, that is your prerogative as the applicant. The Also, the other two items have not guess, failed. Um, they are currently failed, have not passed to be recommended to, uh, in the future. However, there's two other possibilities on those as well that an appeal could be brought or the items can be brought back after a delay of time. But just um, those are the different processes. I know they're, I'm speaking to two different items or uh, four different items, but there are, uh, those are your options and prerogative. I think um, what we would like to do is defer the remaining two items to the next meeting. And then we'll address the, the two failed ones. At a later date. You mean the current item and the, and the next one? Yes. Okay. Hold on one second. We already have a motion, so we could go back to the motioner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you think it's best that you want to defer items K and, and L to the next meeting? Yes. Understanding that the previous two, I think our, our staff guidance is normal, normally six months before they can come back. Right. I was about to say, at this point in time, as far as as far as the uh, the previous two items that have been voted on, the alternative is to uh, is to bring it back because it by policy the commission doesn't reconsider something within a six month period. So your option is to come back before the commission in six months, or you you have the uh, right to file an appeal, and then that item will then okay. this item will go from this you know, the recommendation that came out of this body goes on to be considered by the city council, and you get the opportunity to address the city council. So if we were to proceed on with these two items, get a vote down. Uh, Can we defer these last two items? To we could, the, uh, if, if that's, that's what, what you want. Okay. So we go to, to Commissioner Schulein. I'm happy to withdraw my motion. And, and I'd be happy to recommend the, the item be deferred. Till okay, the item K, 5K be deferred till next meeting or till a later date? What, what would the applicant? Okay. Fine with me. Second okay. motion. All right. So we have a change to item 5K. The a motion uh, has changed to defer item 5K to the September meeting from Commissioner Schulein, seconded by Commissioner Yonkel. Uh, any other talk on this item? Okay, we have a motion to defer item 5K from Commissioner Schulein to the next meeting, seconded by Commissioner Yonkel. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is deferred. Okay, we go on to 5L, Bill Carey. Consider a request for the addition of stock control on North Chartel Avenue at Northwest 15th Street to establish always stock control. Staff? Uh, you've got your our staff comments before you. Uh, is this item being requested to be deferred to the next meeting as well? Okay, you got a request from the applicant to defer to the September meeting. Okay, can I have a motion concerning item 5L? Mr. Chairman, I move the item be deferred until next month. We have a motion to defer item 5L from Commissioner Schulein, seconded by? Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. Any talk on 5L? Okay, motion to defer item 5L to the September meeting from Commissioner Schulein, seconded by Commissioner Hale. Can I be votes, please? Okay, item is deferred. Okay, we go on to 5M, Timothy W. Johnson, PE, President Johnson & Associates, Inc., and Traffic Management Division, to consider a request to establish a full-time passenger loading zone on the east side of Russell M. Perry Avenue from approximately 25 feet north to 165 feet north of the north curve line of East Main Street. Sir, can I have your name, your address? You have up to five minutes. Caleb Morgan with Johnson & Associates, 1 East Sheridan, Oklahoma City. Uh, we've read the staff review and we appreciate it and we agree with their comments and recommendation. If you have any questions, I'm here for it. Thank you very much. Staff input? Okay. We're recommending approval of the item as presented. Uh, we're recommending that um, we're asking that a motion for approval uh, be for this uh, 
passenger loading zone to be in effect on a full-time basis. It is our anticipation that, that uh, the applicant will be sub submitting a subsequent request for a valet loading zone overlay, which, which necessitates the need to have this passenger loading zone effective all the time so that it, the area can't be used for parking purposes. Okay. We have a motion concerning item 5M. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve it with staff's recommendation to be for a full-time basis. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Miller to approve item 5M with staff comments on the full-time basis. We have a second. Second. A second from Commissioner Shuline. Any discussion? Is there a quick question on sidewalk width between the drop-off and the building? What is that distance? What? Between the drop-off and the building. The drop-off and the building? Uh, I don't have that in front of me. I believe it is 20 feet. So we have 20 feet of pedestrian space between the drop-off and the building? Uh, yeah. Just looking at the drawing, that would, with your drop-off being three times as wide as your pedestrian space, that being your drop-off 60 foot wide, is that correct? No. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I am wrong. That is, it is around six feet, so it's a third. The drop off is around 15 feet wide. Does that six feet meet downtown requirements for sidewalk for this? for a hotel situation? That's a question I can't answer offhand. I would have to go through uh, zoning regulations to find out if there's a, if there's a certain set minimum. Uh, their building, it looks like, is a, is a building, of, is the proposed building footprint at the right of way line? Yes. Okay. I mean, we, can, we can get that information for you. For, the, for a subsequent meeting, but we just don't have it in front of us right at the moment. I just have concerns with if this is a drop-off area, there's going to be baggage, luggage, those kind of things out there that will, be, will impede the accessible path. There are several locations like this around the city, and I know that it may be allowed or has been allowed in the past, and it's maybe not allowed in the future, but I... Uh, I'm with Stuart on this one. I'm not sure what the requirement is. I don't know of one uh, that's greater than sidewalk width. Uh, but I don't think there's any regulation specifically for a drop-off. It's usually just the sidewalk width. If it's up against the curb, it's got to be a minimum of six feet, which is met here. But um, I don't believe there's any requirement as far as drop-off that I can think of. Well, I might ask, on this, on this particular design, now you can't, you don't get a 3D feel for this. But uh, is, is there going to be a curb at the edge of this loading zone, or is the curb going to be? Uh, yes. Well, it'll is be, it, it'll be through even the with... taper or through the, uh, the taper from the street, and right. it'll be flat along the sidewalk. So the sidewalk will be at the pavement height, and it'll slope out towards the street. Okay, so there won't, there won't be a curb transition between the edge of this, the edge of the lay-by and the sidewalk. They'll be flush. Right. Okay. To the commissioner, do you do you do you think there's a regulation this is not meeting? I mean, I, I don't know, and I don't even, I I don't want to pretend to chime in. I just want to make sure that we are, we we know the standard, and that we are following the standard. And I feel like we don't know the standard on yeah. this particular question. I believe there are uh, design standards uh, that establish the width of sidewalks. Uh, into the different districts. Uh, this would be the Bricktown district, I believe. Did, was this subject to a design review committee review? Yeah. Okay. So was it's it, gone through plan review and all this. Okay, so it's been approved through those bodies. Right. And as I'm aware, it's six foot, and it, if it's adjacent to the curb, six foot. If it's not adjacent to a curb, it's five feet. And uh, we've met the six foot to this location. I'm not aware of any requirement for drop off or uh, different parts of the city. 
Right, because and really what what you're looking at the application before you as to whether or not a uh, a certain a certain portion of the curb space along the east side of Russell and Perry north of Main Street is going to be able to be set aside for use as, as a passenger loading zone. So yeah, if there's if there's something that needs to be changed as far as that goes, a, a width, we can address that, but we're we're requesting now just to drop off. And loading zone. Uh, and I'm not opposed to the drop off. Right. What I the information I have in front of me, there's no dimensions on. There's no dimensions for the drop off. Right. There's no dimensions for the sidewalk. Um, those would be helpful for right. me. Um, I'm not opposed to the drop off provided it meets the standards. Right. These do meet the standards that we're aware of. We're not aware of any additional standards you, that may apply to a drop off or different places in the city. But uh, that can be addressed, and we can check into it. Okay, Did you say this was approved by Planning Commission? Uh, plan review. I, I think it's in the. It's been through plan review. By uh, another body before it gets to us. Right. Oh, by Bricktown. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we're assuming, right? That it went through the normal Brick Bricktown renovation. Uh, I believe so. Called. That's something I'd have to check on. I know it's gone through Oklahoma City, like the current plan review at Oklahoma City, but Bricktown. Oh, okay. I'd have to check on that. I'm not sure. Feels like we need a little more information. I mean, does it, am I the only one that feels like we need more information or do we have? No, I feel that there could be more information provided. Well, the actual drawings and the widths and all that kind of stuff, that would come from the Planning Commission. Ours is just the approval of a drop-off. And like you said, this map is just showing where the drop-off would be, not the actual engineering diagrams with the actual footage, et cetera. Am I correct, right. sir? Right, you are correct. Yeah. So Which would be done at the final plat, correct? Right. Or the building permit stage. Building permit stage, whenever the plans are approved. Right. Sorry. If there's a problem, no, that's fine. So it will it's really be not an issue of ours, unless you'd like it to be. I, I don't want to make any more <laughs> issue. <laughs> All right. Any other talk on item 5M? Okay. We have a motion to approve item 5M uh, with the modification from staff on the full-time basis from Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Schuline. Can I be votes, please? Okay. Item is approved. Thank you. 5N, Janice Matthew, Principal Coil. Uh, Quail Creek Elementary School and the Traffic Management Division. Uh, staff, you have a quick input. Okay, uh, the applicant has contacted us and she's requested this item be withdrawn. So we would recommend that you uh, strike it from the agenda. Okay, do we have a motion concerning item 5N? Motion to strike. And we have a motion to strike item 5N from Commissioner Hale. We have a second. Second. Second from Commissioner Craig. So we, any, any talk on 5N? Okay, we have a motion to strike item 5N uh, from Commissioner Hale, seconded by Commissioner Craig. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is approved. Uh, comments from citizens, there's none out there. Okay, uh, reports and other items from the traffic commissioners. We'll go down through the list here. Com uh, Commissioner uh, Claire? Craig, Claire. Nothing. Sorry, sorry about the name on the other side. Okay, nothing from uh, Commissioner Clare, from Commissioner Littlefield. I'll be as quick as possible. The first comment that I want to make is that I'm amazed at how this body can operate. And when people speak up and open up the opportunities for ways of, of looking at things, giving time to look at things a little bit differently, I really appreciate it. I did not realize that that could be done. Uh, with regard to the uh, tra neighborhood traffic calming subcommittee, uh, that I know that two months ago I mentioned that a, an inventory of items were taken by the um, director of public works. Uh, he is working on looking at those items. I think maybe starting with one and and working the way up uh, and coming up with a policy. So we've got we got a little bit more work to go here, which is good. But there is a commitment that by the end of the year, or by just over the first of the year, we'll have something. And sooner than that, I'm sure that there'll be information and plan to share. Uh, the, the other 
point of interest for me, which is Im very important for me to understand. And I, I would imagine it would be very important for the other members of this body to understand is the quasi-judicial nature, opinion, nature of the, the Traffic and Transportation Commission. I, in my ward, work directly with uh, my city councilman, with my planning commissioner, with applicants, with neighborhoods, and we look at all kinds of things together and we share all kinds of ideas together. I need to know at what point in the process, like, and, and there's two points that are important to me. One is just a direct application that comes before the Planning Commission, like it's a stop sign or it's a red light. The other thing that's important to me is in the process of working with the Planning Commission, applicants in neighborhoods, on a, a much grand scale, there's the structure, there's the neighborhood, there's all of those items, but there may be a portion of it that is traffic related that eventually would come before this commission. Where does a commissioner abide by the opinion when the communication has to stop? Sorry about that. I was writing down your uh, real question because I didn't, I know you had emailed uh, that question to us and I was actually going to talk to you um, and try and ask what cl clarification on what you were intending. Um, so when you are dealing with a direct application to the traffic commission, uh, for instance, with the uh, just a neighborhood application regarding a stop sign, that would be something that would be would ne need to be very hands off. And since it is coming before you for your uh, review uh, at that point, the other question, unfortunately, I. I need to ask a little bit more detailed question uh, with you, if you don't mind, and no, have a little bit more conversation shoot. with you, um, and then I'd be glad to give sure. a more in-depth oh, answer. But um, right now, I think I'm a little unsure of exactly what you're asking. So okay. if you don't mind if I can talk to you afterward. That, that'd be wonderful, questions. and then okay. we'll share the findings with no the... No problem. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, that's it. Okay. Hang over to Commissioner Miller. Uh, oops, sorry, <laughs> Commissioner White. Nothing to report, sir. <laughs> nothing okay. And then we go to uh, Commissioner Hale. Uh, nothing to report, sir. Commissioner Shuline. And Commissioner Miller. Nothing. Okay. Report, Commissioner Yonkel. Okay. Right. Could you maybe go down to that road that's down at the bottom of the hill there, and especially after a Thunder game, see if someone could be down there? All right, thank you. Counselor, anything else? No, thank you. Staff? Uh, ordinarily, we've got a report for, on stop and yields, but we didn't have any for the report in the last month. I did, in listening to the discussions that were held today, there's one thing I want to kind of highlight. I'm just going to pull up the, uh, the last item that was, just, that was not heard. It would be item 5L on this agenda. You've got, a, you've got an upcoming request that you'll be considering next month, which would be over at Chartel on Northwest 15th Street. Just running through the basic format of the report, we've got traffic entering volumes, we've got data on the width of the street, um, We've got posted speed limit information. We've, we, we do a speed study, so we've got an 85th percentile speed. I mean, this is all very current information for you. Um, we also pull collision information. And in this particular case, at the bottom page two and at the top of page three on this particular intersection, we, we went ahead and uh, queried that the, the um, ODOT makes um, information that is called together by the Department of Public Safety available to us for collision reporting purposes. And like a, at the, in the case of like uh, Chartel on Northwest 15th Street uh, in 2015, there were no collisions reported. Uh, going as far back as the database exists, which is January 1st of 1998, there have been two. So, I mean, you know, when you, there, there are a lot of, you'll hear a lot of times when you know, there's a lot of reports of, you know, a lot of collisions witnessed and that sort of thing. We pull together the best information that we can to help you make the most informed decision that you can. And like Commissioner Shuline mentioned earlier, you know, the, the criteria set forth in the manual on uniform traffic control devices and the city's longstanding policy when it comes to the criteria that we evaluate as staff in making our recommendation for the use of something like all-way stop control. I mean, to say these numbers are hard and fast is, is not true because these are numbers that have just been developed over time. They're a guide in order to help you make decisions. I mean, you're, you're kind of in a position where you've got to listen to, you've got to listen to the public, 
but you've also got to consider the facts that, you know, the engineering and the statistical information that's presented to help you make, you know, the best, most informed decision that you can. And, you know, we encourage you to ask, and you do an outstanding job as far as asking, questioning, and bringing up issues. So I, I appreciate that very much, but I just want to let you know that a lot of the questions that you're asking, you can probably dig a lot of that stuff out from these staff reports. So, I mean, if, at, once reports go out, if you've ever got any questions, you know, please feel free to contact my office. Happy to visit with every one of you. I wouldn't do it on a quorum basis, but I'd happy to be in, visit with you individually. We don't, we don't get it on a paper format, but, we, but we've got access to the same database that it would be produced from. So we can produce those numbers by ourselves. If we were to just rely on the science, they wouldn't need a body of nine bodies. The science is so valuable, and I apologize this time because I had downloading issues. I could not get my agenda in its totality. I had bits, pieces, chunks. So I scraped the best I, because I need staff input. I'm not the scientist on it. But I tell you what, I am never, is a strong word, but I'm willing to use it here. I'm never going to just rely on the science and ignore the voice of the person that's living it. I think it's supposed to be a combined exercise. That's democracy. We have to have the standards. I, don't, I sound a little preachy right now. But I, it is in no way when I go against staff recommendations or the science, it is in no way to say it is not of vital importance because it is. But it can't be everything. So I apologize if I seem disrespectful to the process or to who I value so critically. Stuart, you have no idea how much I value what you guys do. I need it. I. But I tell you, this stop sign is important to these people. We just call it a stop sign and we see a bunch of red dots. It's their safety. It's their livelihood. It's their community they've built. It's the community where they're going to keep building. This is big stuff. It's, the, it's, their, it's their, their home. So please do not take it as a discredit to the regulation, the standards, to your unbelievably hard work, thorough work, science that we need, we wouldn't get to where we get every time without it. But we have to have the human peace. So please don't feel undervalued or underappreciated because you are not by any stretch undervalued. Or, and you're not saying that. I'm saying it on your behalf. I, I, I don't know, those are just getting to me today. But I appreciate you and all you represent and the unbelievable amount of science and engineering and numbers that you come with that you know flawlessly backwards and forwards every single time. It's huge to us. I couldn't participate without it. So please don't take it that we don't value it or that we're discrediting the standard. Commissioner Miller, I appreciate the standard. I just am not going to ignore other things either. That's all. Oh, yeah, exactly. And when we, when we prepare these staff reports, that's why we've got, we've got photographs in there. And I endeavor to make it to every single site that's on the, on the uh, commission's agenda. Because, I mean, I won't just talk to you about some place that I've not been to or had the opportunity to go and investigate. Because, like I said, we provide you with, with like, traffic, vo traffic volumes, collision information, but it doesn't necessarily tell the entire story. And that's part of what the pictures are trying to do. We tried, you know, we don't want to overwhelm you with those, but we want to try and give you a sense as to, what's look, as to what it looks like in the event that you don't have the opportunity to take a look at it yourself. So it's 
just, just the, uh, the raw traffic data numbers don't tell the whole picture. So we try to give you as complete a picture as you can just to help you make kind of tough, tough decisions. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. And it's valued that way. Here's the other thing today screamed loudly to me how important it is that we be here. Nine is very different than eight to people that took time out of their, and I've missed a lot because when my little boy is sick, I'm a mommy, number one. I'm going to be with my little boy. So I'm not lecturing us, but this was a message to myself because I have missed some meetings and I try to, I never lightly taken. But boy, the impact of a tie vote is interesting. So you have my solemnly sworn conviction that I will try to not miss meetings. Not that I ever have, but you know what I mean. Uh, okay, anybody? I just have a quick question. I'll try and be brief and just so that I understand the process. But my, my understanding is we are a recommending body, so we did not approve uh, those two items. But, and so they are not allowed to go forward at all. The, as far as the applicant for those cases go, if the applicant takes no further action on it, the decision of the commission is final. Now, they can, if they wanted to reapply through, the, through this body to have those items heard again, the, po the uh, standard operating policies and procedure says you need to wait six months before we can bring it back again. Um, the municipal code also gives them the, alter the alternative to, make, to file an appeal within 10 days from this hearing date, in which case the city council will take up the item. And at that point in time, the city council is presented with a series of, uh, of options. They can either approve it, they can deny the item, or they can refer it back to the commission again. Well, I think just, you know, knowing that it was four to four and there was one absent, I mean, that would be some, some information that, and I imagine they, they get that information. Right, because we always report what the vote total was, not how individual commissioners voted, just the number of votes for and against the item. On, on some of the items that we hear here, they are advisory. We'll make a decision and then it goes on to council for a final decision. Is that not correct? And then other items that we hear are final. But examples would be stop signs. Yes. Uh, traffic signals, stop signs, decisions that this commission makes, if they're approved, that's, that's, that's where it stops. Speed limits are the same way, but items relative to like metered parking or, well, metered parking is the only one that comes to mind, but that's an item that goes on to the city council for its consideration. So, and anything that requires an ordinance obviously has to go to the city council. I recall getting my welcome letter five years ago, I think, to the traffic commission. And it, it said, basically, welcome to the traffic transportation commission representing Ward 2. It's a learn-as-you-go process. And there was no manual. You know, and, and the, the phenomenal thing in these years that I've, that I've participated here is the education that I've gotten has been remarkable, not only on the way things work, but the, the public process, the um, meeting structures, uh, and the, the thoughts and ideas that come out of different voices is just amazing. The, but the, the most amazing thing that I have taken away from my public work is true, honest to goodness, recognition and acceptance that the folks out there are every bit as much a part of what's going on up here and have to be taken very seriously. You know, when, when we have a group of people, uh, it happens every now and then, very well organized neighborhood comes up here and they've worked hard and they're, they absolutely should be a, as much a part of the machine as the statistics. I'm being redundant, but I want to compliment you on how you work the process today is really pretty cool. I never knew that. Okay, any other items from up here on the shoot? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn from somebody? Motion. Motion from Commissioner Hales, seconded by? A second. By Commissioner uh, uh, Clare, and all votes. Let's vote real quick, see if we can get out of here. All right, we're out of here. <laughs>